In this lecture, you'll learn about VMware terminology, which is specific to storage. That's VAAI, VASA, and multipath plugins. Starting off with VAAI, which is the vSphere API for array integration. This utilizes communication between the ASXi hosts and the storage system. vSphere can offload some functions to storage systems such as virtual machine cloning. So if you've got a virtual machine which is already set up in vSphere and you want to make a clone of that, you can use VAAI for that. Also, if you're deploying a new virtual machine from a template, and also storage v motion. You'll see what storage v motion is with the demonstration coming up in a second. Offloaded functions have better performance. The offloaded functions take place directly on the storage system without having to be processed by and pass through the ESXi host. Again, on the next couple of slides, I'm going to show you how this is going to aid the performance. VAAI is built in for SAN protocols on supported storage systems. For NAS protocols, it's NFS that is supported by vSphere. That requires a software plugin to be installed. So let's see how VAAI improves performance by first looking at what happens when we don't have it enabled. And I'm going to use storage vMotion for this example. I spoke about vMotion in the previous lecture. That's where you can move a virtual machine from one ESXi host to another ESXi host. So you're moving the ESXi host that the virtual machine is running on. With storage vMotion, what you're doing there is moving the virtual machine's files from one data store to a different data store. So we're going to do a storage vMotion for the example here. And in this first example, we do not have VAAI enabled. So when we do that, you can see in the example, I've got my ASXi host, which is running virtual machine one. And I want to move the virtual machine's files from data store one to data store two on the same storage system. So I run that storage vMotion. And what is going to happen is the files are going to be passed through the ASXi host on the way from one data store to the other data store. So that is going to take up resources on the ESXi host. It's also going to take up network bandwidth as well. Now let's look at what happens when we do have VAAI enabled. So when this happens, the ESXi host sends the command to the storage system and the migration is going to happen directly on the storage system. So rather than passing through the ESXi host, the files move from one data store to the different data store on that same storage system directly on the storage system without having to go through the ESXi host. So you can see that we offloaded that function from the ESXi host. It literally puts less load on the host, which is going to aid performance. So with VAI, let's go back to that slide again. It's going to work for storage vMotion, also other functions, like if we are cloning a virtual machine, or deploying a virtual machine from a template, again, that traffic won't have to go through the ESXi host. It's going to be done directly on the storage system. So that was VAAI. VAAI utilizes communication between the ESXi hosts and the storage system. Next up is VASA, which is the vSphere API for storage awareness, where VAAI is between the hosts and the storage system, VASA utilizes communication between the vCenter server and the storage system. With VASA, vCenter learns the capabilities of the storage, such as the disk types that are available there, whether thin provisioning is available on the storage system or not, if storage efficiency is available, meaning deduplication and compression, and also if replication is available for redundancy for replicating our data from one storage system to another. So your vCenter server is going to learn that information, and then that information can be used in storage policies. So with these storage policies, you can choose the required capabilities of storage when provisioning virtual machines. So you could, for example, have a high performance profile, and you could also have a low performance storage profile. 
Then when you created a virtual machine that required the high performance, you would say, I want to use the high performance storage profile for that. And it will get a high performance capabilities on the storage system. And then your low performance virtual machine that doesn't require that high performance, it will get the lower performance capabilities. So this provides simplicity and reduces errors because you set up the storage policy once, then select it whenever you create a VM. So rather than every time you create a VM, you have to individually configure the storage settings for that VM. You just use policies that are set up ahead of time. And then when you provision the VM, you just specify the profile that you want to use. So rather than doing it individually each time, this is going to end up that you're going to get more consistency there. You're going to have less errors, and that's going to mean that you have to do less troubleshooting. Health and capacity information can also be provided to vSphere as well. So that information can be viewed from the vCenter server rather than having to see it on the storage system, which can make administration easier. Okay, so that was Vasa. The last one that I want to talk about here is MPP, which is multi-pathing plugins. MPPs allow SAN storage traffic to flow over multiple paths. We already spoke a lot about multi-pathing earlier in the course. There's two components of MPPs. That's PSPs and SATPs. PSP is the path selection plugin, which selects the best path. So for example, if you've got a four node cluster and the LUN is on node one, we would like the ESXi host to choose a path that terminates on node one, not one that terminates on node four. PSP will control that. And SAPP is the storage array type plugin that handles failover and error detection. So if a path goes down, we're gonna need to detect that it's gone down and fail over to another path. It's SAPP that handles that. PSA is the VMware Pluggable Storage Architecture. This is a collection of APIs which allow storage vendors like NetApp to design their own MPPs, PSPs, and SAPPs, which optimize load balancing and failover and are specifically designed for their storage systems. So it's the best settings optimized for that particular storage system. NMP is the native multipathing plugin. That is the default MPP from VMware, which is built into ESXi hosts. Path selection policy and storage array type policy can be found in the vSphere settings for an ESXi host connection to a data store. And the default path selection policy options are fixed, which will always use a particular fixed path. Round robin, where if you've got separate Fabric A and Fabric B connections, you can have it load balanced over too. And finally, most recently used. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands on practice with NetApp Storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also, check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.